Ron, let me bring you back into this. Uh, if you asked me a couple of years ago, I probably would have been one of the people who said it's not fair to the kids here to uh, pull the rug out from under them and force them to learn a system. They're going to get turned off by the educational system. They won't really be on the same footing, obviously, as the kids who've spoken English uh, their whole lives here. And they're going to be turned off and probably increase the dropout rates. I've changed my opinion a little bit with these uh, studies, but is it fair to just look at the black and white numbers? Some people say class sizes have been uh, decreased, and uh, there's a lot of factors that go into the performance of these kids in California, and it can't just be labeled that it uh, is all immersion into the classroom. I'd be the last one to claim that Proposition 227 is the only reason the test scores moved up so rapidly. Now, actually, class size reduction was not a significant factor. In fact, there were studies showing the impact of class size reduction was probably only about 5% or 10% of the improvement in test scores. In other words, it was a fairly negligible factor. The other large factor besides the switch to English immersion was getting rid of whole language and switching over to phonics because whole language just doesn't work very well and phonics works much better. The ironic thing about it is all the supporters of bilingual education are also supporters of whole language. So they were opposed to both of those changes and I think they were proven wrong on both grounds. But I really do believe that certainly the increase in test scores was, uh, may, was in very significant part caused by eliminating bilingual education. And one sign of it is those school districts in California that tried to keep their bilingual programs showed minimal improvement in test scores. And those that most completely eliminated bilingual education, notably Oceanside down near San Diego, districts like that doubled their test scores in less than two years, which is quite remarkable. Now, let me ask you, one of the um, byproducts of going to an immersion program here uh, is the reduction in terms of cost that has to go in. You're obviously going to cut down on all of the uh, separate classes that have to go into place here for bilingual education. And uh, in some reports, it's a third of the cost if you had bilingual education. Do you suggest here that that money, that savings, be poured back into the schools in terms of uh, additional tutoring here, additional after-school programs, so when the kids find, as they will in all cases, in that first six months, that roadblock, they're helped and encouraged to stay into it, or do you think the savings should be passed on to uh, the taxpayers? Well, first of all, there isn't really that large savings. In other words, different studies have come to different conclusions. But uh, remember, the students in a bilingual classroom are being taught, in a sense, in a similar classroom to a non-bilingual or non-Spanish oriented classroom. Now the books are a little bit more expensive and sometimes they have to pay the teachers a little bit more, but the cost saving is not that gigantic. And in fact, our initiative, Proposition 227, required that the extra money be spent still on those same students. In other words, the immigrant students who don't know English very well and simply used to improve the program or provide, for example, slightly smaller class size or slightly better materials. But again, the cost savings are not that dramatic. I, I mean, that is not the best, best reason to oppose bilingual education that costs a huge amount of extra money. The best reason to oppose it is it just doesn't really work compared with English immersion. Uh, one of the, at least to me, one of the most startling numbers uh, that came out in the polls was one of the groups that uh, is the strongest proponent of immersion are the immigrants themselves. In fact, we're putting up a number that came through from the public agenda that 75% of recent immigrants oppose bilingual education here. And uh, I, I guess the feelings was, was that uh, they want the next generation to do better, right? Absolutely. In other words, many immigrant parents know perfectly well that if they knew English a little bit better, if they could read and write English better, they could get a much better job in our society. And they certainly want the children their children to be taught English as much as possible by the schools. In fact, Proposition 227 originally began when I read a series of articles in Los Angeles Times about a group of immigrant parents in downtown Los Angeles, Latino garment workers, who actually had to start a public boycott of their own local elementary school because it refused to teach the children English. And when a system has reached the point where parents have to carry picket signs because a school refuses to allow their children to learn English, I felt something had to be done about it. All the national polls have shown that the vast, vast majority of immigrant parents oppose native language instruction and want their children taught English as quickly as possible. In fact, one of the parts of 227 that also is very helpful in California is that it takes some of the money saved by eliminating bilingual education and puts it into funding for adult English literacy programs so that, for example, some of the parents of those children 
can learn English as well. And that way, when the parents and children are both learning English, they can help each other. Now, uh, obviously, we, uh, everyone's touting on both sides the success of uh, the program in California. Uh, it's been more than rumored, and in fact, you're on record as saying that this should be taken nationwide. Have you, uh, how about New York here, specifically? I know you talked about uh, how the city uh, political structure works. It, it would be pretty difficult for it to pass through New York, right? Right. Now, uh, actually, I've helped already a group of people in Arizona, parents and teachers and community activists, put a similar initiative on the ballot, which they'll be voting on in just a few mm -hmm. weeks, and I think it'll win. I really think it would be tremendously beneficial to try to do something about the failed bilingual programs in New York, and I'm very pessimistic about the state legislature taking any action on this, because the bilingual teachers and the bilingual administrators and the bilingual coordinators and the bilingual academics tend to have a stranglehold on the political process. On the other hand, I do think while it's difficult to put something on the ballot in New York City dealing with this issue, I think it definitely might be worth the effort. And I've already been talking with a few people in New York about possibly working with them to move something like this forward, which I think would be tremendously beneficial.